So today I'd really like to focus on the concept of the I statements for each sign. So that'll be kind of like the lens. And then of course we can work within that and expand. But I'd like to kind of name before each class the vision so that there's some organization around that. Any comments on that? Okay, great. So before we start, we're going to evoke our dear friend, Mercury or Hermes, our trickster god, <laughs> who is in charge of all of this nonsense. Why? And I'll open sacred space in a moment, but I wanted to speak to him and bring him in. No coincidence, Mercury's retrograde. So here he is doing his, his damage. The trickster, and there's a great book by this name, The Trickster Runs the World. The reason that the trickster runs the world, the reason that astrology, alchemy, spiritual transformation, and any philosophy is run by the trickster, and it really is the planet for Age of Aquarius, is because this is all a trick and all a game and all a con of how we can get to know ourselves. And we really need to evoke and play and have fun with this trickster god that makes us run around the world fight, play, create, destroy, <laughs> get sick, all in attempts to learn who the heck we are and what the hell we're doing here. And so we can get a little bit closer to love of self, of other, the world. So he's going to be our guide on this journey each session. And when you open up your materials to study or read, bring him in open sacred space and, and evoke him. He has the caduceus, which is all of the hidden wisdom in the universe. He has wing sandals so that you could distract yourself and think that your path is someone else's or over here, over which way to get you to be anchored again. He has a helmet so that you can understand and get curious about your mind and your subconscious specifically. And he speaks to so much about what this path is about. And if we only focused on this one archetype, this one God, we would know so much more about ourselves. And he has us running around what seems to be shallow, what seems to be on multiple doors, which seems to be like a game that we just never got the map or the instructions to, but the chart is indeed that. And so if we invite him to take us into the underworld, the depths of ourselves. And he is the only God that is allowed to go up to heaven, Olympus, higher consciousness, and down into the depths of Hades, the depths of ourselves, specifically our shadow selves, and figure it all out here in this playground we call Earth. We'll, we'll do right by ourselves and by him, by honoring everything that he brings to, to our plate. I'd really just like to invite him in and thank him that, and, and we did not plan this class during Mercury Retrograde. That was not at all what I had looked at when we decided the date. So here we are. And I'm just going to speak to this, even though this may be ahead of your, your lens at this moment. Mercury, the planet Mercury has to do with manipulation and covert power and logic and intelligence. Mm -hmm. And the retrograde and particularly now in airy season has to do with Mars, which is the creator God, which has to do with overt power, perhaps aggression. And really the magic happens when we find a way to mix both of these, our covert and our overt power, our very aggressive selves and our manipulative take a backseat selves. So that's what I kind of want to constellate for this group that we allow that all of our power in all of the ways it shows up in all of the planets in all of the houses in all of the signs, the way that we exercise our power dynamic in this world, get clear to each of us. Okay. So first let's start with the I statements. Every sign has an I statement. Basic A to Z elementary building blocks of astrology is understanding the statement that each sign has. Why? That is going to be the container in which every single thing that that person has a lived experience 
the cusp, the planet, the sign, the house will channel through it. It's like the container or the tattoo, imagine being tattooed head to foot with that statement. That is going to be the overriding value and thought that the person or the situation or the placement will move in the world. So let's recap the 12. And this is all in your content. Aries, I am. Taurus, I have. Gemini, I think. Cancer, I feel. Leo, I will. Virgo, no, I, it's not I judge and criticize. It's I analyze. <laughs> Libra, I balance. Scorpio, I want. Sagittarius, I aim or seek. Capricorn, I use. Aquarius, I know. And Pisces, I believe. That is the vision that the sign has. So if you're looking at just sun sign astrology, each of you has a sun sign. That statement is how you move in the world. That is the vision in which you incarnate. That same thing is applied with your planets of that sign. The houses that rule, the sign that rules the house, the cusps, that one sentence. If you learn that one sentence, you have so much already accomplished in astrology because it sets the container in which everything that's happening to that person or that situation is, is, is the context in which it's happening. So let's talk a little bit about the sentences and then we'll go to questions and, and, and answer the questions through this, this lens. Aries, anyone know an Aries? Unmute yourself so we can have a, a chat. <laughs> okay, yes, your husband's an Aries, Jennifer. Okay, so tell me in one sentence <laughs> how Stuart lives out, I am. <laughs> And what that represents to you, what is I am, when you hear those two words about a person, especially your partner, what, what does that evoke? Stuart does what Stuart wants to do. Okay, so give me one word of that. What is it when someone does what they're going to do? Oh, really? Am I, is that a judgment statement I'm going to make? No, no, no. I want one <laughs> word okay. so we can contextualize. We're going to do this for each of them. Uh, independent. <laughs> okay, perfect. Isn't one of the words of Aries on that list of keywords, independence? Yeah. It is. And so steward is being steward. Yeah. Wherever you have Aries, by sign, by planet, Mars, by cusp, there is going to be an energy of independence. If we go back to our uh, Aries, Gemini, or, or Mercury and Aries um, foundation that I mentioned earlier, what power is that? Overt or covert? Overt. Overt. Okay. Anyone know a Taurus? Yes. <laughs> is that Carissa? Yes. <laughs> okay. Who do you know that's a Taurus? Um, a, a good friend of mine who is no longer speaking to me. Okay, so I have, how does he or she, um, a, a sentence or a word or two to describe the person? Um, she is hard-headed and loves her belongings. Okay. <laughs> Are those not words that describe... Keywords of Taurus. Mm -hmm. Is that an overt power or a covert power? Overt, right? No. It's covert because belongings protect you. Oh. It's a form of protection. I'm in power because I'm not letting you get close. Vulnerability is ultimately the greatest power, but if you have things just like weight, Tauruses are tend to be heavy set or put on weight easily it's because they're trying to protect 
So it's a covert power. I'm going to tie this all together, I promise. Gemini. Jen, are you a Gemini or is your ascendant Gemini? I can't remember. My ascendant is Gemini. Okay. So Gemini, whether it's a person. I'm or, a Gemini. Uh, Chris is a, oh, Chris is a Gemini. Gemini. Okay. So a word or two of, of Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to answer for myself. <laughs> Anyone I know observe, Gemini? I, I observe, Carissa, and I think about this. I, I know I know it's I analyze, but I also notice no, she... No, I think. Oh, I think, I think. I, I observe that she's always thinking and watching. She's always watching and thinking. Okay, so what does it mean when someone says, I think? Uh, what is the act of starting a sentence with, I think? I believe. I, I think it's this Not way. Like, That's Pisces. Oh. I think. We have to stick to the lens and the vision of the sign. I think. What is I think? What energy does that evoke when someone starts a sentence like that? That they're taking charge, that they know they know best. Okay. They know best. They take charge. And that this is the only way. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> overt or covert? Oh, she's definitely covert. <laughs> no, but not her as a whole entity. Okay. Go to the lens. You see, we get <laughs> is get to I think. Is I think an overt power or a covert? That's an overt oh, power. That's a very overt statement yeah. and an overt power. Perfect. Cancer. <laughs> oh, Anyone boy. know a cancer? <laughs> I know a cancer. Do we know so many? What was that, Megan? I know so many. They're all around me. (laughs) Okay. And the sentence is, I feel. What does that mean in terms of all those cancers that you So a couple words. No. Emotional, watery. Emotional. What else? Watery. (laughs) Okay, that's emotional. Um... They are very nurturing and caring people. Manipulative. Okay. So their feeling, is that Mm. covert or overt? Overt. Yeah. What was that? Overt. Oh, I think covert. You think overt? Covert. It's covert power. If I feel and I wrap you in with my emotions, so much mm. so i swallow you i'm mm. actually in control my emotions might seem out of control but the ma- the manner in which i'm taking power is a covert power mechanism leo anyone know a leo or a keyword for oh, yeah. leo i will <laughs> not like it's not in the sentence right <laughs> A word or two about Leo. It's their party. Okay. So attention. <laughs> yeah. Center of attention. Their show party. all. Okay. Is that over or covert? Over. 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 Okay. Virgo. I analyze. Oh, boy. A I word know. or two about your favorite Virgo, Jen. They can be very pedantic, <laughs> very black and white. Okay. Now, wouldn't that make sense if I analyze is the vision, it has to fit into a box. It has to go into an Excel spreadsheet. You mm-hmm. cannot put something in an Excel spreadsheet without saying error, error, if the formula isn't right. So it makes sense that that the way they view the world is like an Excel spreadsheet and everything has that column and everything has a box and everything adds up. Mm -hmm. Now, is that covert or overt? Overt. Oh, it's covert, is it? It's black and white. And I'm going to put you in this box or in this box. Who's in charge? You and your entirety of who you are or the person that has the box that they're going to put you in. Think of the power dynamic. I'm going to tie it in in a minute to a lot of the stuff in your intro stuff. Is how you take up space in the world. 
That's a very covert way to take up space in the world. If you call the columns A, B, C, one, two, three, who's in charge? Now, the Leo is, I'm here. They don't care what's going on. It's all about them. The covert is, how do I fit perfectly in the Leo system where I'm really getting the attention, even though they think they have the attention? So the power currency is dictating several things, and I'll, I'll get to the basics of astrology in a minute, about how the person moves in the world. And that's why that vision, that sentence is so key. Because you cannot analyze unless someone allows you to analyze them. So the person being analyzed is overt, but the person analyzing has more power in a way. It's covert. Just like Capricorn, you're using, someone has to let you use them. So we have to understand this. This is how people move in the world and our systems constellate this way. Ourselves, our families, our relationships, the world, situations. And all that houses are, are the little container situations. And whatever someone has in their house by sign and by planet, they're going to move either overtly or covertly through that vision of that sentence. That's 90% of what's going on in astrology. But we judge these things. Oh, covert's bad, or overt's good, or I analyze is bad, or using is bad. So we, we miss the entirety of the person and of the chart because we're so busy saying, oh, well, I don't want to say that about this placement. No, it's how you move in this part of your world through this power mechanism so that you can get ultimately what you want. And we have trouble with owning that. So we pull back. We're not honest with ourselves. We're not honest with other people. And that's why we stay so shallow. So hence... He needs winged sandals to give you 500 situations. So you can see the same thing 500 times to finally say, well, maybe. Let me go a little deeper. It keeps showing up. So that's why he's the trickster. And he's the one that brings scenarios and all these different versions so that we can say, oh, there's some seed here of these things that weave them together. Let me invite that depth in. I balance Libra. Who knows a Libra? My sister. Leo. Yes. We all have Libras. Okay, Megan, a word or two about your sister. <laughs> she needs a lot of validation and attention. <laughs> okay. We all know Libras. Yeah. <laughs> Is that overt or covert? Um... It's hard because I see her as a, like a whole, as an overt person. But forget her, but yeah. do I balance? Mm. Overt. overt. No, covert. Overt. No, no, overt. overt. <laughs> if someone needs attention and validation, they're asking, asking very clearly, I need this from you. Their behaviors at least are forcing you to do that. Yeah, they are needy. Needy, okay. Scorpio, <laughs> I want... Anyone has a Scorpio? I love Scorpios. Okay. <laughs> Sentence or two about Scorpios. They are I wonder how I want and I use get together very well. <laughs> we get That's curious. I mean, <laughs> we play very well together. Of course. We, we sort of see each other. If the they Scorpio want it to take it and you can use it and make something of it, you guys are going to be BFFs, my friend. Definitely. Scorpios, I like All what I like. Over. What I like about Scorpios is I, I always feel like I know where I stand with a Scorpio. They're the, even though they're the water a water sign, they're much more um I I don't know they're probably more of a covert energy, but I still feel like it's much clearer what it is they want. They're like not afraid to to state what they want, to to be very clear about about it. So you know where you stand with them. Like direct people. Are they very direct? direct? That's it. They're direct. Okay. So I want is directedness. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing direct and clear. 
Yes, mm. direct and clear. Intense can be very intense though with it. Like it could still have a lot of intense emotion, but there's a directness and a clarity, even if it's a little intense. Okay. Would you say that's overt or covert? Well, that feels overt the way I'm describing it, but I think of all water signs as covert. It is covert because what's behind the want, what's behind a desire is not clear. Mm. The ask appears to be clear, but what's underneath is what they really, what they're really after. They don't ask clearly for that. Okay. But what you're saying in terms of the way they move in the world and say, I want, right? It seems like they're pointing and saying, give me that. But really what's happening is underneath, there's something else. The real ask is underneath and you have to kind of, if they let you poke to, to get clearer. Okay, Sagittarius, I like I seek. On your paperwork it says I aim, but same difference. So what's I seek? What's a Sagittarius? The travelers, <laughs> the joy seekers, the fun seekers. Very free spirited. Okay, traveler, joy, fun, free spirited. So what are they seeking through the travel, through the free spirit, through the joy, through the fun? Escapism. Okay. Um, is it overt or covert? It's more overt, isn't it? It's overt escapism. Yeah, overt escapism. <laughs> okay, so that's overt. Capricorn, like two Capricorns. I use. <laughs> well, Francis, you know some Capricorns. Tell us what you think about Capricorn. <laughs> I'm just asking the questions today. <laughs> asking and answering. I use. And do, do you know any Capricorn? Capricorn. Does any know? I'm sorry? Jenny, do you know any Capricorns you can speak to? Jenny, is it Marjorie Capricorn? Wait, which Jenny? Oh, it's me. <laughs> um, one I or two say, words. Um, they're very in the physical world, feet on the ground, um, always moving the ball forward. Um, and sometimes the ball is way down the road, but they're already moving it. Very goal oriented. Okay. Overt or covert? I think it's a bit covert. That indeed it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're not letting anyone know that you're using them. <laughs> you're going to frame it in a way that it's for them, not for you. Aquarius, I know. So now we went to Gemini, I think. Mm -hmm. What I know. There's more confidence in that. Dylan's an Aquarius. And to me, he's just very like, I know that someone else is analytic or I analyze, but he is very like logically analytical and good at communication and like a humanitarian. Okay, so logical, analytical, confident, humanitarian. Mm -hmm. The More Aquarius spiritual. I know is very like, it's, it's a certainty, but through facts, through mm -hmm. scientific facts. It's that sort of detachment from the emotion because there's science, there's logic, there's something to back it up. So science, are very science designed. Overt or covert? Over. Over. And Pisces, I believe. <laughs> it can be a little, uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Detached from the material reality. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> um, emotional, but I always think of the word nebulous, a little nebulous, like a little bit in the ether, even though they're a water sign. So I think of Aquarius and Pisces as both being a little nebulous, kind of in the ether. Okay, so I believe is detached from reality. And in the ether, 
Ether is another word for Akash, which is the universal consciousness. If your vision of the world is I believe, you don't believe in anything here. You believe in something beyond. You believe in something you can't see. That's what faith and belief is, right? I believe it even though I can't see it. So our vision is what's beyond what I can see. And so if you arrange your placements and the people in your lives with these sentences, now you start to understand why a person is, why they are. Chosen profession, chosen partner, how they move in the world, perhaps what they do for fun. And it organizes everything in two words. Now, why do I ask about overt or covert? Besides understanding how the placements are going to play around in the house, why would that matter? The power currency matters, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> yes, it matters. Because <laughs> I said so and I wrote a book about it. <laughs> Well, if you understand the power currency of the sign and you're and you're trying to engage in relationships with people, I, I find it helpful to to know that about the person. But in but then I'm a Capricorn, so obviously I'm All right. and being you're, like you covert. know these things. I'm you're kind of covertly. Yeah. I'm managing my relationships probably strategically at all times in a subconscious way. So therefore, I'm interested in the other person's power currency because I'm going to work. I'm going to You're try to, to adapt to yes, whatever exactly. they are so that you could get your utility out of them. Exactly. Yeah. The reason just from an astrological perspective, and I don't know how far each of you are in the content, is the covert and the overt has to do with something called polarity. A sign is either masculine or feminine. All of the ones that you said were overt are masculine. All of the ones that you said were covert are feminine. What does feminine mean? It is either a water sign or an earth sign. If it's overt, it's a fire sign and an air sign. This is the elemental basics of astrology. You know the view in which the person is ruling their life. You know if they're going to be masculine and feminine in their power currency and the way they move forward, which is their polarity. And now you know, I'll see if you do, the opposite sign has to have, it has to have an opposite polarity. There has to be an opposite to balance it out. So the first six, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, um, Virgo, have an opposing six, Libra, Scorpio, Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. This makes the pairs. So Aries to Libra. What did we say? I am, I balance. Why would I am and I balance be a pair? So if Stuart is independent, what do we know about Libras to be? What is the overriding thing about the Libra sign? needy it's not so much needy they're about groups they're about public relations yeah. they're about yeah. teams so you've got the aries i independent to the dependent and that's not really fair to say dependent but the interdependent libra so wherever you have or the person that you're speaking to using these 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 sentences you have this framework of this vision where do you think, let's just use uh, Stuart Aries for a second. If Stuart is independent, Stuart does what Stuart wants. That's his vision. What do you think is happening back here with the Libra, with the eye balance? Where does he get, or how does he satisfy? Because you have to satisfy both, it's a scale. How does he satisfy the we to his eye, the interdependence to his independence? How does he personally live that out? He owns a retreat center. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yeah. I do what I want at my retreat center, <laughs> but I do <laughs> it in a, yes. amongst a group of people. And mm-hmm. since the day I met Stuart and you, Stuart's not ever alone. He's always finding kids off the street to collect. They mm-hmm. satisfy mm-hmm. his need to balance his I am independence. So if you only look at a person through their sun sign, you're missing a whole part of them that they probably aren't familiar with because it's something they need to balance. And immediately you see the imbalance. I give too much to myself and not enough to others, or I give way too much to others and not enough to myself. And that is the drama of an Aries Libra. That right there. I am, I balance. And how do I do that? How do I satisfy that? So now, each of you, I'm just going to use Megan for a second. Megan, you're a Capricorn. I use. Dylan is an Aquarius. I know. How do you work out using and knowing? Mm -hmm. I use what he knows. (laughs) And you use what he knows and you built your empire around that. Exactly. And that's why it works for the two of you. And I bet you if I ran your combined chart, it would be something about the workhouse, the professional house, something where you guys create together fifth house. Because Mm -hmm. those two sentences bring you together and there's something that constellates with just those two sentences. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one thing can be brought out to families, to systems, to work environments. So this is the basic building block. So now you have the vision of the person, the other part that they leave out, but something in their world has to satisfy that other part that's the opposite sign. You have if it's masculine or feminine, you have their overt or covert power, which has to do with masculine and feminine. And you know whether it's a water, earth sign, or a fire air sign. All the basics in your intro to basics class based on two words per person. How's that for a framework? (laughs) So now that we take into the chart, we're not gonna do this today, but I'm just gonna name it. What you are looking for in a chart is an incongruity. Things that don't match up. That's the function of this game we call life. The pieces don't fit and how do I get them to fit? 